know who was shooting at us, but we crawled back to the plane, got back in, and took off as soon as we could. And we went over to the island of Bataan, and there it was all jungle. There was a clearing on, on that island of just big enough for two rows of tents. And some of the soldiers were playing ball uh, in between the two rows, and so we buzzed those two rows, buzzed the ball team, rather, so they stopped playing, so we'd have a, a place to land. So we landed our plane in between the two rows of tents, borrowed the captain's weapons carrier, another gun, and then we went into the jungle uh, with the idea to see if we could shoot a, a wild boar. But there were so many dead bodies in there and, and uh, caves in there that so were all going rotten. And, and the ants were on each body by the millions and millions and millions of ants on each body. We didn't want to go back in the cave because of booby traps. So we just went into the mouth of the cave and decided to come back out. But out in the jungle there were all kinds of bodies and clothing and everything like that. So we decided, well, we better get back to camp, get in our plane, because it's going to be getting dark before we could get back to base. So we finally we made it to back just in time before it got too dark to land. So that was our experience on Bataan. What about the Okinawa typhoon, Daddy? No, well, this is when we were headed towards Japan from the Philippines. We got caught in what they call the Okinawa typhoon. It broke, we had about 10 or 12 ships in our convoy in two lines, and it broke one ship right in half, and they gave us the order to prepare to abandon ship but, because we almost crashed into two other ships. But by the time we got out there and our life preservers on and out to our assigned rafts, well, we're, it was too late. The emergency was over, so they didn't give us the order to abandon the ship. Thank goodness. That was 11.30 at night. So that was another experience. But I've often wondered what it feel like being on a sinking ship in the middle of the ocean. And that gave me the, the feeling of what it would feel like being in such a situation. We could either bring a gun home with a Japanese gun or a Japanese sword. So I brought a sword home because it was a lot lighter and easier to carry. So we got some kimonos while we were over there for our wives and some string of cultured pearls and so on and so forth. So that was about it. We had a good experience, but it was, it was a good thing over with too. At least we could get back to, to our wives and get back to some going to school, starting up a normal living for a change. Well, you ask me what I did when I was mischievous. I can't sit, think of anything that I did with, when I was mischievous, other than shooting birds out of a tree with my flipper and things like that. But the things that I enjoyed when I was younger was going to uh, ice skating about every week. We'd go down there ice skating and at Liberty Park and have all kinds of fun. That was probably the best sport, but I knew at the time, I know that. No, oh, yeah, I fell through the ice and had a hard time getting out, but that was at Liberty Park, and I kept trying to get out, and the ice kept breaking off and breaking off, but I finally got out, and I walked home because it was getting kind of chilly. And, uh, yeah, I, yeah, we... In the summertime, we got, uh, uh, I'd go down with my sister down, they used to have movies down at Liberty Park every Saturday. So one Saturday, we went down there to the movies and coming back, crossing the 11th East, I guess I wasn't looking where I was going or something, but I got run over with a car. And I got hooked up, hooked underneath the car. My the uh, car hit me, I guess, in the hip or something. My head bent over, broke up the, the, <laughs> the headlight, and I got hooked under the car, and uh, it dragged me for I don't know how far. But then it, I 
ca I came loose. I became unhooked from the car, and I came too long enough to see some more headlights headed my way, so I got up and ran over to the parking, parking on the lawn, and laid down there and passed out again. Nothing serious, it just hit my head, and that's the way I act like I do. I don't know how far it dragged, drug me. It's, I don't know. I, I, was un, I, I was unconscious at the time, so I don't know how far. Well, I always thought it was 40 or 50, but there's no way for me to tell for sure. Well, during the Depression, my job, my dad didn't have a job, of course, during the Depression. There were about, I think there were about 14 million men out of work. And we didn't, we didn't have a job, so my dad and my mother decided to, uh, and also my dad's three brothers, two brothers, uh, and their families, they all went in, into business making up artificial wax flowers. So we started selling those. We didn't, never did sell too good here in Salt Lake. But then we went to uh, Cal Oakland, California, we rented out a big home, and our family lived in part of it, and one of his brothers and his, their family, his family uh, were, uh, lived in the other part of the, the big home. And we were all in the same business making up these wax flowers. We had a 26 Dodge, and uh, my dad made special racks to go in the back, to fit in the back, and also in the trunk. And if we, I uh, was very careful we could get in maybe uh, 103 flowers uh, a day that we would make up. And he would take them down to one of these canneries and uh, sell, uh, uh, sell the flowers in all uh, one or two hours. And we made real good money then because we'd sell them for a dollar, a dollar and a half each or whatever he could get out of them. And then my dad wasn't happy with that, so we. He moved to California, uh, Los Angeles, and uh, things were a lot harder down there. We had to, uh, he had to spend all day trying to sell 50 or 60 flowers down there. So we weren't happy with that. We went up to Portland, Oregon, and it rained every day up there, so we uh, took off for Seattle, Washington, and sold. By that time, prices had fallen. Instead of getting a dollar, dollar and a half, two dollars for flowers, we had to settle for maybe a quart of peaches or two or three quarts of peaches or something like that. Well, it was all food, so that was the main thing. And back in those days, uh, if you're lucky to have food on the table, well, you're just mighty lucky. So those, those were real rough days, and whenever I got out of school, I'd go out and sell flowers for two or three hours before dark. We were able to make a go of it one way or another. My dad, he was a foundry worker, but things got real slow in that in that direction. So we went through the depression, and know what the depression is like, and it wasn't much fun with everybody being out of work. Well, around the dinner table one night, we uh, our kids were talking about penguins down at the South Pole. And I told him, well, next time I go to the South Pole, I'll bring one home. But I've never made that date yet. But, uh, you know, I was just going to say when we were over in the Philippines, we, they were in a great big hurry to get us over there. So they got us over there. But then when we got over there, we found out that our equipment, our blind landing equipment, hadn't come up from Australia yet. So we had to wait a month for that to show up. You know, we had, I think we had about seven or eight units from Australia, but they didn't work. So we had to repair them and get them going. Uh, we had to uh, salvage one complete unit in order to get the others going for us so we could install them in the Philippines and also up there in Japan. And it was, very, the, wet, the, the rain was really coming down, very dangerous out there with the, all that 3,000 volts to worry about and out in the mud. And we had cardboard over the top of our heads and 
and things like that, trying to help protect us a little bit. So and then they were talking about meals in the Philippines. We're waiting to get on a ship to go up to Japan, and the meals were terrible. But we lived, our tent was pretty close to a mess tent. One of the boys snuck over inside the mess tent and swiped a few hay rations, brought them back. And so we kind of filled up on bread. That's one good thing they had was bread and some marmalade jam and crackers. So that's what we kind of lived on there for about two weeks there. Yeah, when we landed in the, on the Philippine Islands, we, there were so many sunken ships and half of them were sticking up out of the water. So we couldn't go in at night. We had to wait till morning, till daylight to guide our ship in. And when we got in there, there were one post after another after another telephone well, they looked like telephone posts, but they're all antenna posts, all right next to one another, all these bases. Whenever we'd go into town, we'd go into town, and if we got hungry, uh, we'd stop off at the Marine base or Navy base or Army base, Air Force base, or anything to, uh, for lunch. So it didn't matter where we ate, we just ate when we got a chance. So it was quite an experience and, uh, and a lot of F Filipinos and sometimes we, the Jap Japanese would get uh, try to mix in with the T Filipinos and hope that they wouldn't be recognized into the garbage can. Well, he would try to get us to uh, dump our garbage into his paper sack so he could take it home to feed his family with. I met her in high school, I guess it was. I was in my last year. And she was in her next to last year. Well, at any rate, she signed up for another year so she could go 12 years. At that time, it was only required to go 11 years to school. But she signed up for an extra year. So when I got out of the Army, I decided to go up to university for 40 years and get that over with. But in the meantime, uh, she worked and I worked in the Army paid for part of our schooling and so on. But at any rate, uh, I met her in high school, and uh, well, it was one of her neighbors, right? really, I guess it was, one of her neighbors that introduced her to me. I was a good friend of his, him, and he introduced the two of us together. And so, at any rate, we went out several times and had a good time together.